The Old Gold Club. Powered by Wolverhampton Building Supplies. With Mikey Burrows and Chris Iwalumo. Welcome along to the Old Gold Club. I'm Mikey Burrows. Alongside me, Chris Awellamo, our guest this week, made 272 appearances, scoring seven goals across a seven-year period, lifting the championship trophy in 2009, but also suffering back-to-back relegations. We are reuniting two-thirds of Wolves Debate Club. Carl Henry is here. Carl, brilliant to have you with us. Are you all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, good, thanks. Good to be here. We have already gotten into quite a lot of stuff, uh, which will be on our podcast element. So if you want to go and check that out already, uh, it'll be available iTunes, Spotify, and a lot of other places as well. A lot of interesting chat on it. Um, In honour of the debate club, which was a thing that it was you two and Dave Jones, um, they used to do videos (laughs) on the old Wolves player, um, of sat around pulling out topics and chatting about them so in honor of that i thought we'd do things a bit differently so in this wolverhampton building supplies mug are a selection of topics and you're going to get to pick them out at random to decide where we start to talk so away you go mr carl henry pull out our first topic for our show okay it's a good one the madness of charlton okay i love this right (laughs) so this is all to do start off with about that game that happened, it was March 2008. By this point, um, you'd been through some playoff heartbreak and then the team is building up to eventually what becomes the promotion-winning team. A th- ridiculous five-goal thriller of a game. Looms actually plays for Charlton in this match, so we'll get his view on it in a second. <laughs> See the face on him, look at But for you, and we'll talk about your goal in a minute, about that team and that era and where you were going at that time what did you think um it was i think like you said maybe previously about the the expectation thing i think that um i think at the time mick took over the club that had maybe underachieved um under the previous manager and and the previous set of players they were they were not um they 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 hadn't produced maybe what they're expected to, and um, it was a rebuild job from Mick McCarthy. So he came in and brought in some fresh faces, signed some signed players that for for barely anything, you know, on a shoestring. He he put a squad together, and um, for me, I came in on on trial actually. Um, don't know if you know this, but I came in. Uh, my agent brought a player to the club, Jay Bothroyd, um, who signed. Um, I was at Stoke at the time. I wanted to leave. I was under 24. I wasn't a really a regular, and it got to the point where I wanted to leave and and try and pursue something different, try and carve out my own career. And I'd actually de- agreed a deal at Queens Park Rangers, um, and then Mick came in and said he'd have a look at me. It was when, under the the rules you were allowed to go and, on trial at other clubs. Um, Stoke wouldn't release my registration. They didn't want me to leave, but um, it would have to go to a, tri- a tribunal if I left. And uh, anyway, I came here. Uh, Mick said we've got a game on the pitch next week um, or in a, on Saturday I think this is like the Thursday uh, he said come and, and uh, come and play the game and um, and we'll go from there and get you in for a week of, of training and um, anyway I got, I got off the phone um, rang I rang my old man and said um, yeah they've got a game on the pitch I assumed it was a training game 11 v 11 on the pitch and uh, my old man said it's Steve Ball's uh, like 20th year anniversary is a it's, a it's got to be a full house and um anyway it was a huge game full house here and um yeah, that, anyway that was a phenomenal moment i uh i came in and he said uh, mick said look you'll you'll play second half you play 45 minutes so um i just thought okay well i'll play the game and then probably train the rest of the week and um anyway on unfortunately for for mark davis mark davis was, was in the middle of the park in that game after six seven minutes he got injured and that put him out for a couple of years so it was a real bad injury for him but it gave me an opportunity Mick said right you're on so I, I kind of didn't even have time to to get too nervous about it obviously being my hometown club and and you know the way um it was I had so many people at the game as well um anyway got on after six seven minutes and had the game of my life um and he, he offered me a deal he offered me a deal after the after the game so obviously local local boy the, the quality you've got and I remember when I first came into Stoke and I seen that you were when you were training the quality that you had why? Why not Wolves? Why? Why did you start at Stoke? With the, surely, surely that opportunity would have would have came up with the quality that you've got. 
Um, I was approached by Wolves when I was, I think I was about 14, 13 or 14, 14 I think I was. Um, and I'd already signed for Stoke. I'd, I'd been there, I'd been at Stoke from the age of 11. I signed a five year deal when I was 14 um, there. So they wanted to tie me up at the time. I was, thought it was brilliant. I realised now they wanted to tie me up and make sure that I, I <laughs> no one took, yeah, no one, yeah. no one took me anywhere else. But um, yeah, I remember, I remember my parents being gutted actually when a, the Wolves scout did approach me and um, they were like, oh, no, no, we've, um, yeah, that would have been brilliant. But yeah, it, it, it was, for me, it was, I was, I was at Stoke and once I, I was there, it was, it, that was a great place as well to come through. Obviously you were there for, a, yeah. for a long time as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a, a, a great time coming through Stoke, really good um, academy and, and a lot of good people there and a great place to learn your, your trade. Family, well. family is important to you because obviously I've known you for years. You've said there that you had the, uh, QPR had offered you something. Obviously, then you get the chance to come here and trial. So when you say to the family, they they want there's only one option for them. Yeah, that, that plays a big part. Then doesn't it? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, yeah. When a, when when a club like Wolves says that they want you to come in and train, to come in and clean somebody's boots, any anything that can get you in the door, you you, you take that opportunity. And um, it was yeah, it was a phenomenal opportunity for me, and and one which I. I remember just going out there and just thinking, I mean, Villa, it was against Aston Villa. They were playing it like a friendly and I was playing, <laughs> but it wasn't a friendly for me. I was, I was playing it like my life depended. I remember I smashed Gareth Barry a couple of times and I remember him just looking at me like, what are you doing, what are you doing, you idiot? What's, what's this, it's a, it's a friendly. Uh, but obviously I'm trying, I'm playing for my, my career and for my life and it's, um, yeah, I ran around and just, smashed as many people as I could <laughs> played well had a, had a really good game and um, yeah as I say the rest is, is history Mick offered me a deal straight yeah. after the game and, and did that kind of sum up though that team that evolution of what Wolves became because it it was you know Glenn Hoddle had a certain philosophy and style and when he left some big names kind of came to the end of their Wolves time and speaking to a, a few fans about you and the feeling was that kind of you embodied that that change in spirit, the dynamism, the the effort and intensity that kind of grew from a, a group of young players that built through. Um, I, I'd like to think so. I mean, I can't I, I can't comment on that team. I, I know that team. The perception is that they underachieved, and of, of, of course, with the, the names they had, they were, everybody was expecting big things, and they, it didn't quite happen. Um, for, for, why that didn't happen, I don't know. Glenn Hoddle was a, he's a brilliant coach. I had him at QPR. Um, I was fortunate to have, fortunate enough to have him at QPR for um, a, a couple of months, and he was brilliant. Really, really, really good coach. So much knowledge on the game. Um, so I'm not sh quite sure why it didn't happen, but it was it was a new a new era um, for Wolves, and 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 Mick came in, and I think the way Mick is, I think he instilled those values, didn't he, on his on the team and. We, we quickly, you, you, you come in and you see somebody like Mick McCarthy who's got such a presence about him, such a huge character. And he has these values, old school values maybe, and a philosophy, he wants to win. He's a winner, he's competitive, he's aggressive, um, he's direct, he tells you how it is. More often than not, I felt that he'd say to me, look, you're not, you're not if you don't do these things, you're not gonna play. A lot of managers won't say that to you. You know, they'll tell you what you want to hear. He doesn't tell you what you want to hear. He doesn't mince his words. And I think everybody um, bought into that. He signed young, hungry players, maybe who, who hadn't been there. A lot of us hadn't been to the Premier League. And um, we had a mixture of, of people like Jody Craddock, Looms, who who had already earned their trade and could pass on their knowledge to the younger players. We had some a mixture of, of young, hungry players like myself, um, who were desperate to to achieve, desperate to get there, and and maybe and and some with a lot more ability than me, um, who could we had a, we had a really nice mix of of, of players. Because that Charlton game is one where I know you'd gone through the playoff heartbreak the year before, and in the in the context of kind of the building up to it, that for me and a lot of people I've spoken to was kind of the game where people thought, yeah, there is there is really something about this team because the way that game panned out and obviously it's remembered for Sylvan's incredible goal where, where he comes down the right-hand side, yeah. he's back <laughs> <as> he <could. laughs> 
<laughs> well, I said, we'll get to your goal I in a minute. The, I know the goal, yeah. I know that. You know, because I love that goal, especially because Looms falls over in the build up to it and gets absolutely done by Jody Craddock. Oh, so that, that's Foss, why Foss I remember that goal. Jody won on that, that day, I've got to see. Are you talking about my goal or Sylvan's goal? Sylvan's goal. Oh. Talk about your goal. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm sure he came over the top of it for mine as well. And when the, when the header Jody did, I think. But anyway. For yours, yeah, that's the only header he won that day. Was Jody? it? Yeah. But he got knocked over for, for Silva. I don't think he got knocked over. He's just trying to get a reaction Silva's from goal, Silva's goal, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant goal. Yeah. And, and brilliant game. And that that tie, we were, seventh, were we seventh and eighth in the league? Yeah. Whoever won that game was going into the top six, yeah. weren't they? We had a crucial period of the season. So we knew that going into the game, that this was a big, if we could win this game, put put us in the top six. Um, and there was still, I don't know, what, six weeks of the season there was, left? Yeah, but so. Five, six weeks, yeah. Five games. On that, like, that, that squad... At that moment in time, okay, that, that was a special match and you thought, right, there's a real good chance. Now, I remember, do you feel that that squad was light or was there, was there genuine, a realistic view thinking that we we are good enough to go up? Because I remember the pre-season when I've, I've come in and we've signed some players and we went to, I think it was Burton, and I remember we, we absolutely just battered them. I mean, we bullied them, we footballed them to, to death. And Kites, Michael Kitely said, we've got a real good chance. This is, this is, this is the two weeks into pre-season we, we have everything now we basically got the quality and depth so do you think even after the Charlton match as amazing as that game was maybe the the, the, the squad was a little light um, I'd probably I'd probably say so um, I'd, ag- I'd agree with you there and, and I think that I think each year Mick made better signings and, and sort of signings of intent yeah, um, mm. which you got to, you got to yeah. use them, and, yeah. People like yourself, Christoph Berra, Stearman, David Jones, um, all really good players who came in and improved us. And um, Dave Edwards, Kevin Foley. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were. I mean, they were there. I think they they not come in the first in the, they were the, rat. the 2006, I'm sure maybe the January. They're both, after, they're both, certainly after you. Yeah. yeah, not long, not long after me. But yeah, he he, he signed some really really good players and. I, yeah, I'd agree. I think we just got better and better, and the belief became stronger and stronger. Um, that first, the first year, we weren't expected to do anything. I think I remember sort of murmurs of if we can stay up this year, then we'll be happy with that. And um, and obviously we did. We far surpassed that, um, getting into the playoffs. And that that see, I think the game, that game, the Charlton game. Um, I mean, it was it was a moment for me. For me, it was the best moment of my career. It's my high, career highlight that game. Um, it, Just for the goal or for the general match? <coughs> um, the match, the goal, mixed celebration when we scored the goal. I, I had a chance in the first half that a similar <laughs> chance. The ball hit the post. I followed. I followed somebody shot in. It hit the post and it just bounced out and came behind me. And I slid to try and. and, I, and I, it wasn't at the time. They were like, "Oh, I don't know." Some commentator. <laughs> Just I was watching him back the other day. Yeah, yeah. they were like, he's, so, I think the commentator says Carl Henry's going to wish the ground will swallow yeah, him up. Yeah, yeah, some, you which know, is harsh because so exactly, that's a tough chance. That's exactly what he would have said if he's if got a joke. Lumen, I knew the joke. I had the joke. Yeah. What did he get? Out? Come if on. that was Lumen, he would have said exactly this. He would have said worse. <laughs> oh, oh, he won't believe it. He won't, even, he won't be able to look himself. He won't be able to look his kids in the eyes, eyes tonight. But um, it, it was actually a tough chance. So, but we we played so well in that game. And it was heartbreaking for us that Leroy Lee Lita um, scored the equaliser because we played so well. Such a tough place to go as well at that time. They had a good team, Charlton. And uh, for them to equalise when they did in the 93rd minute, it was just heartbreaking for us because we felt we'd done enough to, to win the game. Um, so to go at the other end and, and score the winner in a fashion that we did was, um, yeah, it was, was that for the goal, the moment it put us in the top six, um, it was a huge moment. Um, for us, for me, and yeah, certainly, okay. I look back on. All we're going to we're going to come to that goal in a minute. We've got to move on because we're going to fast run out of time. So, draw us into the topic from our Wolverhampton Building Supplies mug. The hometown boy. The hometown boy. So a lot of this we've kind of covered from from the chat from beforehand of you kind of starting your career at Stoke and then joining Wolves. One of the things that struck me though was it the pride that you must have had at captaining your hometown club. How much did that mean to you? Um, it, it meant it meant everything. I think if you ask anybody who's ever had the armband, whether it's their hometown club or not, the armband does something to you, doesn't it? Yes. And you sort of put your chest out and you walk out and you 
I'm, I'm leading this club. I'm leading this this team and this group of players. And um, I remember when I first made me captain, I wasn't expecting it at all. And um, I was, I think I was maybe only 23, 24 at, at the time. And um, we had a few older players in the squad. And it, anyway, yeah, it was um, to, to to captain a club, to captain any club or any team is is phenomenal. It's 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 an honour to captain your hometown club. Um, was yeah was something I'll never forget. And but you came close to not just captaining Wolves, but potentially representing England for a period. There's the famous forty man provisional squad under Fabio Capello. You wouldn't have yeah. just been the the top dog in Wolverhampton. You would have been an England international. Well, it was. Um, I know that's that was surreal um, as well. When I got the I got the email through um, or the memo from from the club. <coughs> Um, that I was, it was a time I was playing well. My football was good at the time, um, and Capello put me in the, the 40 man provisional squad um, in a friendly against Denmark. Um, although the memo says Enmark, they, they missed the D off, so <laughs> which was disappointing. But anyway, um, we, uh... <laughs> were, were, you, were you genuinely surprised when the Mick gave you the captain's armband? Because you, you are, you've always been a leader, I think. In in your in your home life and your in the in the in the dressing room on the training you you kind of lead by example you've always been opinionated you've always you've always got the best out of others you said there that like, you put the armband on it does me I had the armband in your absence for the Blackpool game and it does I, I understand what you're saying there but surely you you wouldn't have been surprised no matter th that there was experienced players in the squad. Just going to take a captain C out of the thing there. Okay, uh, Looms is determined to come off this one. No, carry problem. on. <laughs> Um, it was yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. I, I I know. I think when you when you're younger, um, at the time there was so much going on f for me. I I'd left I'd left Stoke. I, that's all I'd known um, really. And um, to come to Wolves, I, I was focusing on my performances and becoming a first team player. There's there's a it, there's a huge jump from being a young academy player to being a first team regular. Um, and it's a huge, huge jump. And you see a lot of really, really good players, a lot of talented players. They can't make it, can they? They cannot make that jump from talented, young player with a load of potential to a first-team player who's going to make a difference, yeah. going to take responsibility and, and going to help the team win. And that, for me, I'd, I'd had a period, I'd, had, I'd played games at Stoke, but I'd never been, I'd never had that responsibility. It never... People weren't expecting me to change the game at Stoke, or weren't expecting me to 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 be somebody who was gonna take responsibility and make sh and organise players around us. It, it hadn't been that coming to Wolves at the time that I did. It was a young squad, um, and maybe my leadership qualities shone through um, in the in the environment that I was in. Um, so to to get the arm, but it wasn't something I was expecting when I did. It was yeah, it it was a phenomenal. Experience and, and, a, and a great honour, one I look back on fondly. I just think it's uh, with the, with the captaincy as well. You know, I think we all we all hold Mick in, in, in high regard as well. But how I guess that the captain's armband was taken off you as well. I think we've got to touch on that. Uh, now we understand football when a manager signing a player, the player has a bit of power. It's definitely something that I believe Rogers definitely said. If I'm coming, this needs to happen, and Mix should have that chat with you. Can you tell us more about that situation? Because I know me, and I wasn't at the club, but we had that conversation on on the phone at that time, and that was something that it cut you pretty deep, didn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, it did. Losing losing the armband, at, I'd, I'd been captain for a number of years. Um, Good captain as well. Remember what you've done. What, yeah, I'd like to think so, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, people might think. I, I, yeah, for for me, I was always a captain. For the, I felt like I I always tried to represent the players. I wasn't maybe necessarily the best manager's captain, um, and I think I can look back now and and un understand that. And Mick would often say to me, you know, things like, "You you need to work with me a bit more," um, as opposed to always working against me. And I always I always felt like. I needed to represent the players and if there were things wrong in the dressing room I'd go up and say to Mick look gaffer this is happening this is happening we need to we need to address this if this is not right I, I would so I'm sure at times I'd be a pain in the backside and <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got yeah no doubt that several of my managers uh, will probably say the same that I'm a pain in the backside but it comes from a good place it comes from me being a winner 
I want things to be to be mm. done correctly. And um, so mix reasoning for that with me, whether it was the case that it was it was part of Roger's contract. Or, I, I don't know. I don't know that it was part of his deal or not. But Mick had said to me, look, I've said to you for, on a number of occasions, I need you to be work with me um, as opposed to against me. And I don't feel you are. And, and that's the reason for it. So what was the reaction to it all? Because there was a perception for those of us who weren't in the dressing room and weren't involved in it, that it caused a big split and that that was part of the issue that then led to what happened after that? Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know necessarily. A lot, a lot of the players said to me that they felt that was really harsh and that I had been a good, a, a good leader. Yeah. Obviously, certain players will say that to you anyway. You know, I, I, whether players felt that or not, I, I don't necessarily know. I think players felt that I had been, I had been a good captain for them. Um, and it's always difficult when you, when you bring somebody in, anybody anybody at all, even the best character in the world, you bring them in and make them captain, it's really tough because they've not been there, they don't know how things work, they don't know how the club works. Um, I learned a lot from that. If I ever became manager, I would ne something I'd never do, I, think, I don't think I'd ever make, bring somebody in and make them captain instantly. I'm sure Mick feels the same. <clears throat> now, I don't know whether he'd, he'd do it again. I'm sure he feels, I've, you know, I've since spoken to Mick, I, I think he maybe feels the same and that, and that definitely was a, a change um, for us all that we all had to deal with and it didn't end up working out but I understand Mick's reasons for it and um, I certainly learned a lot about myself and, and, uh, and understood and, and it certainly made me think differently as well to, towards my behaviour with managers and, and just understanding where, they, where they're where they coming from you know as a player you only focus you're focusing on you and you're focusing on your team you want to win games yep. even like you said about the you as, as a pundit You've got your job to do as a pundit. You, you've got, you know, I've done some radio work now. You've got, and I'm, I'm that focused on what I've got to do. You're not thinking about the players. You're not worried about them. You're just focused on your job and, and Mick's the same. Mick's got his job to do. As a player, I'm not looking at what he's got going on. And I think as you get a bit older, you, you start to understand that. Well, the, the spin of that then, because you were captain, you really represented the players and you'd done that job very well. That gets taken off you. Did that affect, what, what, what changed for you then as a, as a pro coming in? I know you still got your job to do. Does that that, that must that must be difficult? Uh, yeah, it hurt. It, it 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 hurt to lose to lose the armband. Hurt, but um, I got on with it. I I got on with it. I think I'm, I'm a good pro. Um, I came in, trained hard. I, I I love training. I always I've always worked hard. Always trained hard. Mm. And um, I think I ended up having probably one of my better seasons, possibly my best season for Wolves actually. Um, that year, although we got relegated from the Premier League, I, I, I had a really good season on a personal note. Um, and um, I, yeah, the, the, the captaincy thing, I sort of blocked it out and got on with my job. Because do you feel like it con did it contribute to how things started to happen? That maybe the, the group wasn't as united as maybe you'd been beforehand? Because as I say, when it came to the period just after you left and the whole Kenny came in and created that bomb squad. Everyone in that bomb squad was perceived to be people involved that dated back to the whole Henry Johnson captaincy issue. Um, I, I, maybe that was the way it was perceived. From my point of view, I think the club wanted to go in a, a new direction and there were certain players that they wanted at the club. Some, I think, was for financial reasons. Some maybe, you know, I, I'm an influential character I'm I try and organize people I talk to players I care about the game about training and um, for whatever reason Wolves didn't want me at that time um, and they wanted to get rid of us and they made life really difficult and it, that was a period that was you know that was for me to have been captain and been at the club not just for me but a few of us Wardy as well uh, who'd been there for a a decent amount of time. Um, Kevin Doyle, who else? Was Kevin Foley in that group? I he think, was, yeah, I think he Kev was, Foley yeah. was in the group. So I th there was some good lads in that group and certainly to, to be in the bomb squad at the time. I'll tell you what was dis we, Kenny Jackett came in on, on his first day. We had a, um, a meeting as a group and we had a, a meeting. Then he said at the end of his meeting, it was a 10 minute meeting, he said, right, can I speak to these six players? I was one of them. Me, Roger Johnson, um, Jamie O'Hara, Stephen Ward, Kevin Foley, Kevin Doyle. 
Um, and he spoke to each one of us and said, you're not in my plans. Um, you need to find a club. Um, and that was it. There was five minutes, that was it. So that's, I, I as disappointing as that was, I kind of understood it. The club wanted to go. We'd had a, a, a horrible season before. It was, yeah, it was a, a terrible season. Um, to, to be relegated with the squad we had um, should never have happened. I've got my views on why that happened, how that happened, but... Well, we're going to get to that. We'll get to that, yeah, no problem. <laughs> but um, the when Kenny came in and said, that was OK, I, I, was, I was gutted. I was gutted. I think a few of us were gutted. Jamie and, and Roger, they hadn't been at the club as long and whether they were as good, I, I don't know. But certainly myself, Wardy, Kev, Doyle, we, we wanted to be at the club. We didn't want to leave. Um, and we wanted to, or I think we wanted to put things right as well. Yeah. An opportunity to put things right. But anyway, that was how it was. Um, we, we trained, we, we trained, we all worked hard. We all carried on training and, and we kind of said to ourselves as well, look, let's just make sure we're not messing around. Everybody come in, train hard. And because and, you know when you're in these situations, what happens? Managers, clubs can try and make it difficult for you. Um, so we, we trained. Um, even, you know, Roger, to his credit, trained hard, worked hard, didn't, he didn't, he didn't give the manager any opportunity to, to say he'd been a bad egg. Nobody was, was, was being bad eggs. And I think after a couple of weeks of training, I came in one day and uh, the kit man, Mort, said, uh, he said, oh, he said, you're not getting changed in there now. You're getting changed in, you're down the, in the kids' changing room. I said, what, what, do you, what do you mean? So I walked into the changing room. Bear in mind, I've been there for seven years. I had the same spot for seven years. Mm. Um, and my stuff had been, somebody had been in my locker, packed up all my stuff and put it in a box under a table. And I just felt that, I found that so disrespectful. Yeah. Um, just really, really poor. Um, and to all, and all the other lads had already gone down there. They'd just gone. And uh, Mort said, yeah, the manager said, he wants you to train, uh, wants you to get changed down there in the kids' changing room. So... I just said, well, I just was, and they put a young lad in my place as well. They put a young lad in my spot. There were loads of empty spaces and they put a young lad in my spot. So I, I moved, I think it might have been Jamie Record, who was a good lad. I moved Jamie Record. I just said, look, Jamie, can I have my spot back? Look, you, you know, nothing against you. Can you just move mm -hmm. over there? And I put my stuff back in my locker and I just said, if Kenny wants to come down and move me, uh, physically move me himself, then he can do, um, which he never did. But um, just that kind of thing. I think when you've been at a club for so long and a, a year before, when we, we got relegated from the Premier League, Norwich came in for me. Uh, Chris Hughton wanted to sign me. They just got promoted to the Premier League. Um, and obviously that was an attractive move. Uh, Wolves wanted me to stay, didn't want me to leave. I ended up signing a, a four-year deal here. Twelve months later, my, my stuff's in a, in a box yes. under the table. And that was, you know, a re yeah, really disappointing. Listen, we're going to talk a load more about all this on the podcast extra to follow. Um, I just want to finish our Facebook show with something that we call the rundown. So it's fairly quick fire. We've got some different questions for you to start off with. Probably the toughest one people tend to get asked. The best player that you played with at Wolves? Um, I would say David Jones. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. <clears throat> Uh, what's training at the club? Ebanks Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, Ebanks Blake. The biggest moaner? Other than myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Honestly. On the pitch. Pitch or around the training ground? Jones. David Jones. Who's your best friend in football? Um, I've got a couple. A, a couple. Uh, Lewis Buxton, Dara Russell. Okay. Um, who's got the best and worst dress sense when you're at Wolves? Um, worst dress sense, Stephen Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Hunt. Um, and the best... Um, Lumen, what are you looking at me with those puppy dog, <laughs> puppy dog eyes? <laughs> Take those puppy dog eyes somewhere else for you. Um... I'd go um, Stearman, Richard Stearman. Yeah, got a bit, yeah. Yeah, got a bit. Uh, who was the funniest player you played with? Um, Marcus Hall. Marcus <laughs> Hall. 
at uh, Stoke City. He was the left back. At Wolves. At, at Wolves. <laughs> he didn't say at Wolves. Yeah, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said so, but the Wolves podcast me. I thought it was ever, thought it was ever in, my, in my career. Um, <laughs> for this playoff play with at Wolves. Um, oh, God, you're killing me. You've got to give me the heads up on these. Um, this is why it's good because you've got. Who's a player? Who was funny? It's funny, Loomis. Help me out. I put, I put Stacky in. When Stacky came in, he was an absolute lunatic, wasn't he? But yeah, funny if you liked. Being tucked up. Um <laughs> <laughs> being tucked up every game you played, but no. Um It was funny. It was funny. Oh, I think Kevin Foley had his to... had his way about him, but there's for a very different view. There's, there's a few. Yeah, Foles, Kev Foley. Okay. okay. Um final one, just before we wrap up our Facebook show, and we'll do the rest on our podcast extra. Um what was your proudest moment at Wolves? Um, I think the promotion has to be winning the championship. And getting to lift the trophy, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Getting to lift the trophy with the team. Um, we, yeah, getting to lift the trophy. We, we worked so hard for that. And to win the championship, as you know, is, is not, not easy. Um, I think that that moment it was just yeah was phenomenal certainly my proudest right we've got more of our rundown questions to come and loads more to talk about with carl henry as well so make sure you download the podcast available from apple uh, spotify and lots of other places as well thanks very much for watching the old gold club the old gold club powered by wolverhampton building supplies with mikey burrows and chris Iwalumo.